Hey, my little guinea pigs, I'm back to the lab. So today, we will experiment with viruses. Back in the days, uh, when I was a teenager, um, of course, I was kind of out of money, so I was kind of trading discs, let's say, right? And one day, it was a disaster. Like, one third of my discs were corrupted. I realized I got the Lemur exterminator virus. That was really bad. So this time around, it is personal. Let's dissect this thing. But first I was wondering, uh, does this virus even still exist? And sure enough, I found some disk images infected with the Lemur exterminator. Yes, let's get it and see what it is made of. But wait, how can I check quickly if this image really has this virus? Apparently, from the computer virus catalog, you can see that the virus itself checks the 422nd word from the boot sector, and it should contain ABCD. Okay, easy enough. Let's get the ADF and use hexdom to see the first sector. And here it is, you see it, A, B, C, D. As we will experiment with real floppy disks, let's be sure we tag them correctly so we don't mix them up in the future. Okay, floppy zero will be our original infected disk. Then we will have normal disks as one, two, three, and four. Okay, before we need to convert them from ADF to SCP so we can use our grease weasel to, to build them. Let's do a quick check on the normal floppies and we are ready to go. Let's uh, grease weasel write the infected floppy disk. Then we can do the same thing for the four other, other floppies with the normal image. All right, let's get my real Amiga, plug it in, get our infected floppy disk, and boot it up. Here, there is something very strange. It is a data disk from the one I captured on the internet, but it boots anyway to DOS. Hmm. Okay, now the, the Amiga should be infected, so let's flip the drive with the floppy one. It should be infected too. Let's continue and, and infect all the all the floppy disks. You know what? I can uh, use my action replay right now. Let's plug it in and put, the, for example, the floppy drive 4 and, and boot again. I pressed on the action replay button straight away, like before it could actually load the, the disk. And you see that the action replay can detect that a virus has redirected one of the vectors. So, okay, it looks like we are infected. So I started to use the, those floppies, started to copy them, boot them, play with the games and so on and so on. And it started to fail. Some of them were failing because the, the actually the floppies were bad, but I suspected that that was enough. So I started to copy back all the floppies. So the zero, one, two, three, four and so on. Then, on the drive zero that I converted back to ADF, check out what I found. One of the sectors has been overwritten by Lemur, exclamation mark, Lemur, exclamation mark, and, and so on and so on. Okay, so I think we, we got it. So the, the, this virus is actually working. And we have exactly the same symptoms that I witnessed when I, I first got infected by, by it like 30 years ago. So, in order to disassemble this virus, I won't use directly a disassembler. You, you'll understand a little bit later. So I will use Python. So 
So in Python to read the file, it's pretty easy, right? Like uh, here, I make um, a byte array out of uh, the disk image. I, I read it as binary, and I put that in the variable code. So I do a quick check just to be sure that everything is in there. And okay, 901,000 bytes, it should be okay. Like it's around like 880K. So now I need to use uh, this assembler. So I made like um, a couple of helpers, uh, you'll, you'll see. So for example, data, you can jump into the definition. Uh, I use Capstone, which is a Python decompiler that I set up uh, with um, the Motorola 68000, right, as parameters. And I made like a small disassembler uh, that uh, basically wrap their own uh, data structure and just print out the, the result in a nice formatted way. And a data helper that does the same thing without actually uh, disassembling uh, the code, but just format correctly some, some data space. That will be help helpful for what we want to do. So let's go back to our code, uh, remove our debug. So first, we want to know where is the entry point. So if you look at the spec for the Amiga, you can read that the execution starts at location 12 of the first sector read in. So let's do that. Let's just print the data from 0 to 12 and assume it is at the address 1558, which is something I saw with the uh, action replay. That's the actual spot where the Amiga is loading the boot sector. If we execute that, we can check that actually the beginning of the sector starts with DOS. Like that's defined as BBID underscore DOS, right? With zero, yes. Uh, and then you can see the checksum and then the DOS block, right? So that's four plus four, eight plus four, 12. Yes, that is correct. Now, now that it is done, we can kick out those 12 bytes that we don't care, and we can increment the base address to uh, 1564, which is just 12, 12 plus 1558. Okay, so th that will be our entry point. We can ask the disassembler to basically disassemble from that spot on. And there you see uh, that it starts with a move, so a move a constant of 81 exa to d0, okay. And then it branches straight away to 158a. Okay, uh, but the thing is like the disassembler stopped disassembling after 157e. That's because it, it encountered an invalid instruction. So, okay, we'll need to help this uh, decompiler a little bit. And, um, and just jump over, right, uh, all, all, those, uh, all those bytes to go straight to 158a. So our next entry point will be 158a. Then if we want to compute the offset from the beginning of this array, it will be the entry point uh, address minus the base address we define. And then we can ask to uh, the same decompiler to decompile the code from this entry offset on. Let's add some uh, new string here so it's easier to spot in the disassembly window. So here we go, next entry point. Uh, that's what where the, the code jumps. So here first it it saves everything like D0 to D7 and A0 to A6 on the address pointed by A7, I guess this type or something. And then it jumps to a subroutine pointed from A6. A6 is basically the exec base. Uh, that's the reference point where you have a tons of vectors that references functions 
uh, from um, the kickstart basically and uh, you see here on the right there are a bunch of them and if you look at the one that is pointed uh, at 78 bytes before a6 uh, you can find that it is disabled so that disables uh, the interrupts uh, that's something like a lot of programmers are doing uh, when you are doing some low level hackery like this you can do that for a few cycles all right the next instruction is load effective address relative to the current position but still like for us is 15a6 and that to a0 so where is this 15a6 it's there right in the middle of our own function right that that's strange um, okay uh, then the next thing is um, getting a constant somewhere in from 18f9 that is also in the middle of the boot sector into d1 interesting uh, then there is something that looks like a counter of 352 in d2 you'll see a little bit later why i say it is a counter then it starts the loop um, based on this counter d2 you see it at the bra at the, at the end and what it does it gets this constant like a kind of a seed and changes in place the thing pointed by a0 so it starts within directly within actually this uh, routine and adds this constant then right away it XOR the same uh, spot with d0 d0 that we set at 81 at the beginning and that's a very common thing to do when you want to encrypt something when you XOR two values right it's reversible if you XOR again you you find back the the original uh, value then so like like i was saying uh, the instruction db R A will loop over uh, this instruction, this add and uh, and uh, XOR, incrementing A0 and decrementing D2 until it, it exits the loop. And then you see that right away, right after this end of the loop, you have this 15A6. So that's where the um, basically the encrypted part of this boot sector is started. So we need to modify our code to emulate this little algorithm to be able to decrypt starting from 15A2 with the two constants we we have one from the boot sector and the other one from the from the top of the initialization. So let's do this. So this first part is basically the decryption routine. So I fix that. I set up also an endpoint, right? It should stop at 15A6. Then I compute the two offsets. I get the sub array from code and I just disassemble it. Right, right. It stops right where we wanted to stop at 15A2. Perfect. So now we know from this counter 352 that this is the amount of bytes we need to decrypt at 15A6. So let's do this. So the first seed is uh, 81. We can call that also encryption key, I guess. The second one, we can get it straight from um, the image itself right it's at 1859 and um, you need to uh, offset it by the base address of course then we have the number of bytes to convert 352 we saw that so we will start at the endpoint uh, of the grid right like that 1586 then we we convert basically uh, the assembly uh, loop into some Python code. That's exactly the same thing. So until uh, the number of bytes to convert is not 
zero. It's like D2 for, for Python. Uh, we basically change in place the byte that is pointed by the encrypted address, that of set by the base address, of course. So first the addition, then you see that the addition in um, uh, assembly language is add B. So we need a byte. That's why I, I use a modulo 256. So it just roll over, roll over, roll over. Then we do an exclusive OR, which is like the little uh, hat in, um, in Python. Uh, then the rest is easy, like to convert, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, remove one and, uh, and we increment the address and we look over this. Uh, let's then disassemble the result. So basically now it's uh, at the um, uh, entry uh, offset plus the number of bytes to convert, minus 16. So that you will see why, uh, because we have some, uh, again, we have some data after this. So, uh, it looks like it worked. Oh, but wait, we have again the same uh, the same code twice, right? So let's remove it from the first time around. All right, now we should make sense. Okay, so here is our description routine, the loop, and look, now we have the real code. Uh, how do I know that? Because I, I recognize some things. Um, so first, use like A6 again, um, and then uh, look here, like DFF007. That's a classic because it's uh, used. It's the vertical or horizontal sync, right, number, and it is usually used to generate some random numbers. So that's re some real code instead of the garbage we got before. So after this um, uh, code, right, we have, uh, as I told you, like some uh, some data. Let's see what's what's in there. So it starts at uh, one eight cc until the end of the boot sector, basically. So we have a reference to track disk device, which is interesting because that's how the probably the virus will be able to hack into the, um, the driver for the floppy disk. And finally, we have a message from the virus creator, him or herself, the lemur exterminator. That's actually how we knew that the name of this Paris was the Lemur Exterminator. It is just there to, as a, like a little hint from the creator. So I'll stop here for this first part. Uh, we have seen how uh, the virus can encrypt itself and decrypt itself when, when it's loaded by the Amiga. And in the second part, we will look into how the virus can stay in memory and how we can actually resist any uh, reboots, for example, right? And uh, where is the infamous routine that is writing all those lemurs, exclamation mark, lemur exclamation mark on a random sector. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this um, little um, reverse engineering session. Uh, please subscribe, um, I'll prepare the second part of this uh, video pretty soon. <laughs>